How's it going, everybody? C Rad TV back here in our video. So, of course, it's time for another Detroit Lions 2023 NFL draft preview. So, in the last draft preview, we took we wrapped up the day two of the draft previews by looking at the top defensive back and safety prospects in rounds two and three of the 2023 NFL draft class. In this episode video, we're gonna take a we're gonna start to the day three of the draft previews and take a look at the top day three quarterback prospects in rounds four through seven of the 2023 NFL draft class. Since it's very likely the Lions are going to take a quarterback in the, probably day three to be somebody to contend behind Jared Goff for the backup quarterback position. Even though there have been rumors about the Lions going for Teddy Bridgewater, still better to have an option because Nate Sudfeld fucking sucks ass. But yeah, there's some, quite a few interesting prospects on this list, so we'll go ahead, we'll jump right in and take a look at it. So yeah, let's go. Alright, so the first player we're going to go over here, hailing out of TCU, standing six foot one, weighing 211 pounds, we got Max Duggan. So for Max's strengths, he throws it a good touch downfield, changes trajectory to give up his receivers a better chance. Crisp and quick motion can get the ball out with urgency. Quick to identify can sidestep pressure when the interior of the line folds. Size, spurt, and physicality as a runner will both expend plays and give off offensive corners a plus one in the run game. Great functional athlete for the position. Has a good feel for working through his options. Attacking leverage can keep the ball out of danger. Can put his pads down, fight for difficult yards. Chemistry with receivers with some of the best in college football. Steady heartbeat under pressure. Mechanics almost uh, always undisturbed. Confidence and anticipation will make up for most of his arm limitations. In terms of his uh, weaknesses, he missed too many freebies in the short and intermediate game. And his natural philosophy is on the lower end for the NFL. Accuracy is more general than precise, and the overthrows are a fairly big issue. It will get punished more frequently against better competition. Then it doesn't lead his receivers in additional yardage and will often put him them out of their stride. In terms of his NFL comparison, he's been compared to Sam Ellinger of the Indianapolis Colts. Overall, does a lot of good things right. Was pretty solid in college. Had some pretty solid showings. Even helping lead TCU to their first national championship game appearance in decades. But yeah, still, definitely someone to keep an eye on for sure in the later rounds. Alright, so the next player we're going to go over here. Hailing out of Tennessee, standing 6'3", weight, 221 pounds. We got Hendon Hooker. So for heading and strengths, dual threat ability can keep def can keep defenses honest. Great stature, dense sneak and endure contact. Savvy to position maker won't force passes or get reckless. Deep ball touch gives the receivers a lot of room to work with. Leads the receivers in the extra yardage. Has good ball placement, leadership, and toughness. Have drawn rave reviews. Works through his progression with urgency. Willing to fight through tackles. Can put his body on the line for key yardage. In terms of his weaknesses, his long and loopy release, it can lead to passes arriving a little late. Takes a while to build up speed as a runner. Average velocity to drive the ball downfield. Arm talent isn't something he can lean on to make plays. Late to identify can react to pressure. He'll also be approaching 26 years old at the start of his rookie season in the NFL. Athleticism can be further stopped by a torn ACL, so there's a few red flags there that could lower his stock. Accuracy dive bombs when he has to throw around traffic. Awkward off-script passer. Borderline robotic with his mechanics. He loses bearings when the pocket collapses. In terms of his NFL comparison, he's been compared to Jamie Newman of the Hamilton, Hamilton Tiger Cats of the CFL. Overall, though, there's a lot of things he does, too. Great leadership. He has great leadership skills, which is a big draw for the Dan Campbell um, Lions culture. Does a lot of things right. Definitely, this is someone to keep an eye on, especially when he falls into day three. So, the next player we're going to take a look at here, hailing out of Shepard, standing six foot three, weighing 219 pounds, we got Tyson Bagchin. So, for Tyson, for his strengths, well built QB will check off the physical threshold that teams will want. Smooth throwing stroke, able to adjust to traffic at the line. Alters his arm angles efficiently without strain. Size will allow him to fight for yards as a scramble when needed. Smart decision maker, won't force unnecessary passes. Ball placement doesn't take a dive when throwing on the move. Field for pressures, well adapted. Quick processor, can work through his progressions. Touch to layer throws over defenders, can stand out as one of his best assets. Very efficient distributor, sturdy enough to push through weak contact in the pocket. He's also been listed on a small school studs in this draft class because he was one of the best Division II QBs in recent history. 
you know, and good distributor, like I just mentioned, with the accuracy and size that inspires scouts to overlook a lower level of competition. In terms of his weaknesses, though, he's a limited athlete that is exposed when he's forced to improvise. Tends to float sideline throws, will need to find their trajectory against better competition. Level of competition concerns are going to loom large for most scouts. His arm talent's adequate, but nothing out of the ordinary. Internal clock, it will be tested much more regularly by NFL speed. In terms of his NFL comparison, he's been compared to Mike White of the now Miami Dolphins, formerly with the Jets. Overall, there are a lot of things to like out of him for sure. You know, they did very well at a small school district of Division II. Now, whether he can translate to better competition in the NFL, it's yet to be seen. But this is definitely someone I would take a gamble on here for sure. So the next player we're going to take a look at here, hailing out of BYU, standing 6 feet tall, weighing 204 pounds, we got Jaron Hall. So for Jaron Strengths, impressive athlete, elite long speed when he gets rolling, compact release, can be shifted to deal with pressure, smart decision maker, won't force errant passes, easy setup, consistent footwork, led to improved accuracy as a senior, Able to change his throwing lane, can slip passes around traffic at the line of scrimmage. Very efficient, short game QB, multi-sport athlete background, it shows in his body control. In terms of his weaknesses, small frame, it's going to concern a lot of teams. Arm strength average, won't be able to cut through the elements. Offense condenses options, pushed him off script too early. He's easy to bring down due to his lack of size and strength. Faster than quick. Lacks ideal elusiveness with the ball in his hands. His age could be issue as he will be 25 once he gets to the NFL in this rookie season. Um, strains to get the ball outside of the hashes. Passes are in deep trouble when he has to throw off his back foot. And good defensive backs will go duck hunting against him. Pressure gauge will take some time to accumulate to the NFL. In terms of his NFL comparison, he's been compared to now retired quarterback Connor Shaw. Overall, though... A few things that the light got him for sure. Good athlete player could do a lot of things, but you know, sizes could be a concern. You know, definitely maybe someone as a backup for sure. So the next player we're gonna look at here, hailing out of Georgia, standing five foot eleven, weighing 190 pounds. We got Stenson Bennett. So for Stenson strengths, we he has crisp release, minimum waste in motion. Quick to react to pressure in his face. Won't get caught off guard when the gap collapses. Sneaky, efficient scrambler. Has enough quickness to pick up yards on the ground. Effective throwing off platform. Good touch thrower. Can layer passes over linebackers. Keeps his cool when evading rushers. Line ball placement worked into his receiver's leverage. Compact trigger. No wet wind up. Uh, point guard type distributor. What a good handle for the offense. In terms of his weaknesses, though, his size could be a deal-breaker and average arm talent and will limit his windows he can target. He will be relying on his playmakers to do work wider than Crean much on his own. Height's going to be more of an issue dealing with NFL passing lanes. Deep balls are a bit too easy to approach due to the arm strength limitations. Res may not be strong enough to offset the odd blend of physical traits. And for his resume, back-to-back -back championships in with Georgia, that might not be enough. In terms of the NFL comparison, he's been compared to Ian Book and the Philadelphia Eagles. Overall, there's still a lot of states like that for sure, a leader and a winner. You know, maybe someone to take a gamble to be the third string for the moment, but could go into a cute backup in the future. So the next player we're going to go over here, hailing out of Purdue, standing six foot three, weighing 212 pounds, we got Aiden O'Connell. Silver eight in strengths, clean footwork, overall setup, understands the need for touchdown field, can change trajectories and speed on his passes, drifts away from pressure, makes proactive adjustments in the pocket, good rhythm thrower, nice timing underneath, highly confident attacking leverage, team captain that draw plenty of praise for his leadership and football smarts, won't make reckless decisions often, good chemistry and touch on back shoulder throws. In terms of weaknesses, though, his limited arm talent will get tested by NFL game speed. Has to wind up and strain to generate enough velocity on deep balls. Marginal athlete struggles to extend plays. Misses too many gimme throws by rolling away from contact and failing to change arm angles. He lost the camp out for the starting job in 2021 with Purdue. Had to work his way back into the role. His paint within the line style of play. Play strength won't be enough to break through tackles. Throwing motion adjustability isn't consistent and he has a bad habit of missing lurking zone defenders. Um, in terms of the NFL comparison, he's been compared to now retired quarterback Luke Folk. Overall, though, 
A lot of things to like out of him, you know, you know, definitely a leader of men with his leadership skills, which will draw interest from the lines with the culture, and also great football smarts too. You know, makes good decisions too overall. But yeah, definitely this is someone to keep an eye on for sure. So the next player we're gonna look at here, hailing out of Stanford, standing six foot six, weighing two hundred thirty pounds. We got Tanner McKee. So for Tanner's strength, his frame's gonna appeal to scouts who want a big passer that could can put on weight. Ball placement downfield is adequate for the next level. Touch throws that have some impressive accuracy when he works outside the hashes. Flashes are promising when he can take shots and play without pressure. In terms of his weaknesses, though, he drops his eyes and looks for an exit path when he feels pressure rather than keeping his focus downfield. Limited athlete will get caught when he tries to leave the pocket. Internal clock doesn't tick properly. Release a bit winding. Late on too many throws will struggle to anticipate throwing lanes. Accuracy timing falls apart under pressure. Unnatural and inaccurate throwing on the run. Rehearsed robotic. Doesn't know what to do when he starts to take on water in the pocket. Makes a ton of risky throws by misreading leverage. Arm talents average by NFL standards. Have normally a high number of batted passes for a tall QB. He's also been a light puss as a player that could disappoint the NFL level because he looks the part physically, has a good enough arm, but he crumbles under pressure and struggles to extend plays off script. In terms of his NFL comparison, he's been compared to now retired quarterback Brock Osweiler. Overall, though, there were a few flashes where he looked good, but he has a lot of red flags and a lot of issues. Just doesn't take pressure well. I honestly feel like the Lions could probably do better with other QB prospects here. I'd say pass. All right, so the next player we're going to go over here. Hailing out of UCLA, standing six foot one, weighing 200 pounds, we got Dorian Thompson Robinson. So for Dorian's strengths, quick feet allows him to adjust efficiently when working through progressions. Good toughness, agility, vision allows him to weave out of contact as a runner. Comfortable throwing off platform, was a four-year starter, ton of experience and polished game throwing ability in the short and intermediate game. Turnover at first, won't force passes downfield, will hurdle and throw his body around and attempt to get first downs. Turns his weaknesses though, too skittish against pressure, will rush throws when under duress. Has a long and looping throwing motion that comes up from the hip. Size isn't ideal for a consistent running threat. Touch and timing's lacking. Arm talent's modest by NFL standards. Athletic ability won't translate to a position change. Accuracy is more general than specific. Won't throw his targets open. In terms of NFL comparison, he's been compared to Jake Browning of the Cincinnati Bengals. Overall, there are a lot of things to like out of him for sure. Has great experience and makes a, and has great game in the short and immediate game. Maybe someone to keep an eye on for sure. So the next player we're going to go over here, hailing out of Louisville, sitting six feet tall, weighing 195 pounds, we got Malik Cunningham. So in terms of Malik's strengths, comfortable throwing on the run and making plays outside of structure, quality athlete for position, lateral agility allows him to dodge tacklers, can create his own yardage as a scrambler, touch and control on back shoulder throws, deep passes has promising moments, traits suggest more outside than his current output demand demonstrates tough runner will sacrifice his body to gain yards where needed long speed can win some races when he has some room to run in terms of his weaknesses though lacks ideal size and play strength to be a high level rough volume runner in the nfl level average arm strength creates some deep ball limitations hesitancy as a passer will lead the windows closing before the ball arrives will need to rely on his legs less as he transitions to the nfl level Clunky and looping throwing stroke can cause accuracy issues. Lack of size will likely prevent a successful position change. Inconsistent ball placement under pressure outside the short game will be a major issue. Feel for pressures underdeveloped. Flow and rhythm as a passer goes haywire regularly. In terms of NFL comparisons, he's been compared to Eric Kana, the D.C. defenders from the XFL. Overall, there are a lot of things to like out of him for sure. Does a good a lot of things right. Will do everything he can to help his team win. You know, feels like a Dan Campbell type player, you know. Well, I think it's definitely worth taking a look at. And the final quarterback, the final player we're going to talk about in this video. We have hailing out of Penn State, standing 6'2", weighing 213 pounds. We got Sean Clifford. So for Sean Strengths, decent build for position, adequate stature and bulk. Athleticism gives him some off-script ability. Can evade pressure, scrambles out into space if needed. Easy throwing stroke on the run. Doesn't strain to adjust when his feet aren't set. Downfield touch throws are refined. Can make change up trajectories if needed. 
Quality pocket manipulator can slide and climb accordingly. Feel for surrounding pressure is honed on. Could test his way into being viewed as a position change candidate. In terms of weaknesses, limited arm talent, lack of philosophy will make it easy for defenses to condense the field against him. Not deceptive with his eyes, will give away his attention to defensive backs. Tends to load up on passes, makes him late to get to the ball out. Unable to adjust with pressure in his face, struggles to change his arm angle around traffic. Ball placement to the deep and intermediate levels off the field is questionable. Tendency to throw off his back foot will get punished by at the speed NFL game. In terms of NFL comparison, he's been compared to Nathan Rook of the BC Lions of the CFL. Overall, there are a lot of things to like out of his game for sure. He can do a lot of good things right. Gives him, like, a, his athleticism gives him some options. You know, maybe someone to keep an eye on for a third string for sure. Maybe if he goes on drafted, maybe look at him for sure. But yeah, anyway, that'll wrap it up for this Detroit Lions 2023 NFL Draft Preview. So yeah, there are some very interesting quarterback prospects to take a look at for sure in uh, in day three of the draft. There are quite a few prospects for sure, especially if the board um, falls in Detroit's favor and a few prospects fall in, that air, fall in that area. You know, it could open the board up to some options for the Lions. But yeah, definitely some interesting prospects to keep an eye on for sure. Really like a decent amount of these prospects to be like good second or third straight stars. At least third straight stars for now. If the Lions do end up with Teddy Bridgewater, but could grow into a set to a backup QB option once on the Lions are done with Bridgewater, or if they beat out Bridgewater for the starting QB job, like easily a good chunk of these prospects are way better than Nate Sudfield because Nate Fudd spells fucking ass. But anyway, now I'll wrap it up for this draft preview. So the next draft preview, we're going to take a look at the top day three running back prospects since we could, Lions might be looking at a running back in the draft for sure. You know, someone to be a third strainer behind DeAndre Swift and David Montgomery, especially if Swift goes down with another injury. But yeah, anyway, that'll be the next draft preview. But yeah, anyway, that's all I got to say. Hope everyone's a great day, and I'll see you on whatever I make next. I'm out.